In this showcase demo today, I'm going to show you how you can use Cilium and Kubevert together to provide micro supplementation with virtual machines, as well as all the other great features that Cilium provides to cloud native workloads. So before we dive into this, what is Kubevert? So Kubevert is a virtual machine management add-on for Kubernetes. It's deployed on top of a Kubernetes cluster that already exists and provides you a way to run virtual machines side by side with your Kubernetes native workloads. Because Kubevert uses the underlying CNI, that means that Cilium can be used straight away with essentially no additional changes. And you can take advantage of the same feature that you use for your pods, your containers, that you can then uh, transfer across into your virtual machine workloads as well. We hear from a number of customers today that they're looking at the various technologies and hypervisors that are available in the market today, especially when customers are not natively looking to use maybe a cloud provider as well, such as one of the big three uh, hyperscalers that we all know of. And they may be also be looking to move away from their incumbent hypervisor solution as well. So that's one of the reasons to look at Kubevert as a particular offering. And it's got a number of integrations and uh, as an open source project, a number of investors there as well, including Red Hat and is the underlying uh, project that powers OpenShift virtualization, for example. So in the showcase demo, we're going to show communication between containers and virtual machines running instead of the same platform. We're going to show how we can use Hubble for observability traffic of that for that virtual machine that's been deployed as well. We're then going to use the Cilium Gateway API features for ingress access from outside of the cluster to the resources running on that cluster. We're going to host some basic websites there. We're going to look at how we could implement the idea and concepts of zero trust by using silly network policies to create those security boundaries. And then finally, we're going to take advantage of one of the cool features of Kubert, which is the ability to migrate the running virtual machine instance between two Kubernetes nodes as well. And we'll show how communication is still transverses across the network to that virtual machine as that happens. So I'm going to move into my demo environment for this. And straight away, I'm going to create a namespace for my Kubevert demo today. And then first and foremost, let's create a DNS visibility policy just so we get some more interesting uh, traffic data using Hubble in my environment. Um, all we're doing here is capturing anything running in the Kubevert demo. So all endpoints going to my Kube DNS to any particular DNS location. And then we're going to proxy that traffic so that I can see it in the results of a Hubble observe command. Now we're going to create a virtual machine inside of my environment. So let's clear that down. And we're going to create that from a YAML file. We're going to start that using the vert CTL command line, which is used to control resources using kubevert. And then I'm going to show you everything that's running inside of that namespace at the moment as well. So we can now see a couple of things that have happened. So first and foremost, we actually have a pod. We have a service that I've also created. The service is how we're going to communicate into that virtual machine. I've got a little bit of a diagram to show you that as well. And then we've got a virtual machine instance. That's the actual virtual machine itself up and running. The pod is created by Kubevert to enable communication, so that networking traffic. And it does that by attaching the pods to the CNI of Cilium and then creating a bridge to the virtual machine instance itself. In my bottom terminal here, we'll just connect to that virtual machine's console. And then we can see that booting up in the bottom as well. Whilst we wait for that to uh, come online, let's have a look at some of the traffic through my environment as well. We can now see some traffic going between our uh, pod instance, because bear in mind all the traffic will go through that pod because the way that Kubevert networking works for the virtual machine, uh, to some uh, IP addresses uh, of the Ubuntu repositories as it runs updates and so forth in the background. I just move this back down because we'll still have the VM booting up in the bottom. 
let's have a look at the configuration of this virtual machine that I've deployed as well. So again, we deploy this using a YAML file, very similar to how we deploy our workloads in Kubernetes today for pods. Um, we attach to the network, so we're just using the default Kubernetes network, and then we specify inside of that an interface as well, so the virtual machine NIC itself, and we tell it it's being connected to that default network of Kubernetes here. And then further down, I've just configured inside of that virtual machine as well, just to run a script, to kind of create something interesting so we can test some connectivity and so forth as well. And then finally, we've got that service. And all that service is doing is targeting the Kubernetes label that we apply to both the pod and the virtual machine for forwarding traffic. So we're just going to clear that down now. And as we can see, we've still got some uh, traffic going ahead there. And we can see that the virtual machine is still just finishing off its last updates. So we'll just wait for that to finish. Now that my machine's fully booted and the scripts that I ran on first boot have completed, let's test connectivity to this virtual machine from a pod in my environment. So I'm going to run everyone's favorite troubleshooting pod. And we are in. And when let's curl the service that I created, should be able to reference as nginx. See that comes back, so that's great. Let's see if we can also get some information from the additional page I created. So I created a details page on that virtual machine. And this gives me the virtual machine name, the IP address, and some locale information as well. Just so we know it's that particular uh, host operating system of the virtual machine that we were trying to hit. And then finally, I also created a secret page. Nothing major on there, but just we're going to look at how we create security boundaries around that as well using Cilium. Because that page maybe, you know, should be there, but not accessible from others from inside the environment. If I now go back to my Hubble, we can also see communications from my shell. So that's from the pod to the uh, kubevert pod as well. That's backed by that virtual machine. And then we can see those DNS queries. We're just going to Nginx, um, but it puts the full name in there. So all kind of really simple information. Let's clear that down and now. So now inside of my environment, we're actually going to look at how I can access this from my own local machine itself. And we're going to use Gateway API as a feature for that. This is a diagram I've created of my Gateway API setup. This Gateway API is the new replacement for Ingress inside of Kubernetes and it deploys a gateway itself, which is tied to a load balancer. And that load balancer is actually provided by Cilium as well. And I'm advertising the load balancer IP address using layer two announcements. Inside of my gateway, I then specify HTTP route that tells it how to get to uh, pass through that traffic to my various service. And then that service will back it off to the pod itself. So previously I was accessing using the temporary shell forward slash nginx um to those addresses and it will go to the nginx service external we're going to go to hp root again we've set up path prefix of just to anything for that service pass it through to the nginx and then the nginx will pass the service will pass that off to the uh pod launcher and then to the vm instance itself so all kind of really simple from that point of view so we're going to create that uh, gateway. We're also going to get, create the HTTP resource and then I'm just going to label that for my layer two announcements. Let's have a look at that configuration. So the gateway is really, really simple. We'll just tell it to listen on port 80 for HTTP requests and HTTP root tells it exactly where to then send those requests in particular. Because I'm only using the one service, I'm just going to send everything from that path prefix back to that internet service. But if needed, we can actually split and send that across multiple VMs or pods or both inside of our environment with a very simple rule as well. We've got some fantastic guides on that on the Isolate website. So now from my local machine, rather than a pod that runs inside of the cluster, we're going to try and access uh, the same uh, resources inside of that virtual machine. So we can get the gateway, get the IP address of the gateway, and then we're going to curl straight to that address. We can see the NGINX welcome page. We're also going to look at the details page. And then finally, the secret 
page as well when I can spell that correctly and we can see our secret page there so now we've got external communication from outside of the cluster to my virtual machine as well so now let's start thinking about those security boundaries that I talked about we can use silly network policies the same way that we use them for containers to apply to our virtual machine as well so I'm going to create a simple layer 4 that basically just allows on port 80 to that endpoint and again we're selecting that endpoint by using the label and then here we're allowing the traffic from any endpoint inside of the cluster or also anything coming from ingress to so the ingress controller resources which is where gateway api lives so external to cluster via that ingress resource to pod as well and now if i just add this with a follow-on so we're going to that pod of the vert launcher just bear in mind all of the traffic will be uh, proxied through that pod to the virtual machine again we're just going to try and hit this from my local machine and we can see it works and then again we're going to go to the details page and then we can see that come through as a hubble here as well and that's captured from my local machine now if i try to hit this from my temporary shell that i've created i'm just going to see that that ties out and it's actually denied and the reason for that is if we go back to my policy that we created inside of that policy we all, we actually block that from a particular label which is our uh, and client as the value and my pod today doesn't have that label so to fix that very simply i could apply the correct label and then if we try it again we'll see in a moment this now comes and the traffic is forwarded unfortunately though that policy is still pretty open and we want to be a little bit more restricted inside our environment so we're going to upgrade this to a layer 7 policy so we're just going to apply over the top of this we'll clear that down and then let's have a look at that again so we've got very similar i've extended it but we now added layer 7 details into we're allowing the method of get on the uh the normal path and also the path of details and ultimately that doesn't we've not specified secrets that will be blocked now and the same again we've done this for the ingress controller as well so anything that comes through that ingress control from the outside world will also be subject to the same uh, security boundaries put in place if i just bring my details up at the bottom here we can see again this is allowed and the details will be allowed and again with local machine to the virtual machine then finally if i go to the secret we'll see that's failed and we can see the reason for that is that it dropped by that policy and then again if i try this from the demo pod we'll see the same again it gets dropped so the final feature that i wanted to show from kubevert itself is the ability to live migrate virtual machines between running hosts inside of our kubernetes environment so i'm just going to play my bottom down here and i'm going to run a script in the bottom of this which basically just calls out to my virtual machine and then pipe prints out whether it's 200 and that's green any other code will give me uh in a red color so we're still just going to see that tick up we're going to see where my virtual machine is running at the moment so it's running on this particular host and we can see that it's live migratable we're going to issue migrate we're going to watch the migration happen and at the bottom we're also going to see the uh, codes and if there is any change there as well okay so the migration is finished we can see that it succeeded and all of those codes were 200 so we didn't miss anything and essentially i'm just calling to that same http endpoint just because we don't have icmp traffic enabled and then finally if i check we now have this virtual machine running on the second worker node within my cluster now because it's completed that migration. If you want to learn more about using Cilium in these hybrid environments, then head over to the isavalent.com website. And you can also check out our labs at isavalent.com forward slash labs, 
where you can get hands-on with real world environments using the various Cilium features and play about with everything you've kind of seen here today, especially those gateway API features. Thank you very much.